The 2D paint brush and 3D Coast voxel sculpting tool set is very similar to the sphere brush with two notable exceptions. One is that it will utilize your brush alphas, whereas the sphere brush does not. The second one is that it has built in on plane functionality. If I were to right click somewhere on an object, it's going to start at that point. So if I wanted to create a small branch off the side of the head of Baby Groot here, then I could click and drag and it will create this shape regardless of whether or not I have that layer selected. So what I mean by that is this object is located on this layer. I don't actually have to have it selected in order to create this object from the surface. So to demonstrate that, I'll create a new layer and I want to give it a little bit more resolution, so I'll click the increase resolution icon here. Let me select a brush alpha like that. And then when I select the tool, I can right mouse click to determine where I want to start from. I have a number of different options though to define exactly how I want to create a starting point. For example, if I want to make this align to a specific plane, I could choose that option here. So let's go up to the top option here, plane defined by right mouse button clicking. You also have options as to how it's oriented when you click. By default, it's going to be pointing toward the camera. So if I right click over here, even though it's changed the position, it hasn't changed the orientation of the plane. It's always going to face the camera with this option, pick point in forward direction. Let's choose pick point and direction, and it's going to be based on the normals. So let's right click here. It's important to note that when I create a stroke, it's going to run parallel along this plane rather than perpendicular to it. So let me go ahead and click and drag. And in this case, that's not really what I want. So let's undo. And I also don't want to use this absolute draw mode. I want a little bit of tapering here. I'll hit the E key to bring the E panel to me. And I'll choose one of these draw modes here. I'll right click here. And now when I begin to draw, I can see that it's parallel to the plane. I also have tapering enabled, which is activated by clicking this icon next to the radius parameter here in the toolbar. You can set your length here and you can change the profile. In this case though, it's probably better if I choose the default pick point in four direction. Again, I'll right click and then draw it out. Let's turn double sided brush off in the tool options panel and create another stroke. You can see the difference when you turn it off. It only applies depth toward the camera and it's flat on the back side. So undo twice. Now let's turn steady stroke on so we have a little bit smoother stroke. So let me click and just kind of slowly drag it. Same thing here. I can use my bracket keys like I would in Photoshop to increase or decrease the brush size. Okay, so again. Let's right click on one of our branches. We can just build off of that. Now let's look at another practical example, which might allow you to take different shapes from your brush alphas and create objects in 3D space with it. I'm going to go to the view menu and under grid placement, I'll enable the XY plane and I will also click snap to 3D grid. I'm going to hit the E key to bring the E panel to me and I'll choose paint with dabs. It allows you just to create a single instance with a simple click. Now 
Let's choose something like this brush alpha and I can create another layer if I need. Again, I probably want to give it some resolution. And no matter how my viewport camera is oriented, it's going to be positioned and oriented along this axis. So let's go ahead and increase our brush size and I need to come over to the type of surface and define it by the XY plane. So I had double sided turned off. I'll undo that. And I'll check that again here. We can adjust our depth value. You can use your plus and minus key on your regular keyboard, not the number pad, but on your regular keyboard to increase or decrease the depth value. So let's decrease that somewhat. And I can use bracket keys to decrease the radius. So that's a quick and practical look at using the 2D paint tool in 3D Coats Voxel Sculpt and Toolset. Hope you found it helpful. Thank you for watching and we will see you next time.